I mean, I realized while I was doing it with him that one, I, I thought that if I c continued to do it, like it would have ruined my friendship. It also was kind of ruining my relationship. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was like, I don't want to give up like doing my own thing too. And I was with him every single day. So I like kind of told him, I was like, hey, like I think I'm just gonna like do my own thing. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast, episode 11 of Living Large, where you can catch it every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. PST on the app CastBox. If you guys are watching on my YouTube right now, you can see the mug. Oh my God. What's and this? You, you hear me slurping on my latte. Check it out on my YouTube in video form. Today's guest, the very tall model, oh. four foot 11 inch, Woo. Ayla Woodruff. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. How you been? I haven't spoken to you in a long ass time because you've been traveling the world. I know. I have been. I, I had to get out of LA. I had to like experience something else besides, you know. Tell, <laughs> tell the people where you've been. You went to Bali. I went to... Yeah, I went to Bali. I've been to the Maldives or Maldives, however you want to say yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I went to Greece, I like all around Greece, like Athens, Mykonos, Santorini. I went to the Dominican Republic. Jeez. Yeah. The list goes on. The list goes on. I'm going to Jamaica in a week. Wow. I yeah. noticed these are all tropical places. Why do you choose tropical places over like snowboarding or something? I, oh no, are you kidding? I'm like actually so down to like go snowboarding and skiing. Like obviously the weather hasn't been like that yet, yeah. but I. I, it's just brands, you know, like brands want you to be kind of in like the tropical area, you know, for like clothing and stuff like that. So I right. feel like that's kind of where we've been headed. But this like winter, I'm super stoked to finally start going. To go shred the gnar? Yeah, you're going to shred the gnar too? The fresh pow pow? Should we get like a huge house and all shred the gnar together? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, you cuss <laughs> on this thing? You can do whatever you want. Oh, like, just, just keep it to a minimum because some of them are getting demonetized. <laughs> oh God. I don't know why. This but... is going to be a good podcast. <laughs> um... So, so let's talk about it. you want to get out of LA because what you're born and raised here. Well, I mean, I was born in Burbank, but like I moved around a lot when I was a kid. So. Did you always live in California? No, oh, I really? lived in like Arizona for six years. I lived in Florida this is new for information five years. For me. I know. So born in Burbank, LA. Yeah. Moved to Arizona. Moved to Florida first. Then Arizona. Then Arizona. And then you went back to California. And then I went to San Diego. Yeah, back, I was living in Carlsbad. And then my this is really random but like my brother started doing acting mm -hmm. and he booked this movie in Canada and we were getting rid of our house in Carlsbad San Diego anyway so we started we just all moved to Canada for six months random so random <laughs> and then we decided to move back to LA and that's when I kind of moved here like mid seventh grade eighth grade and then I stayed here all throughout high school right so you graduated from Agora yeah I don't know where that is, but if you guys are listening, it's it's in a, it's in LA. Agora Hills, guys. Agora Hills. It's, it's really cute. Did you go to college? I did. I went to UCSD. University of California, San Diego. Yeah. Yes. Look at you. Good job. Did you graduate? I did. Bachelor's degree. Wow. Yeah. High five. Thanks. And Two also, graduates. Also, after that, I went to LMU, Loyola Marymount University, and like got my HR certification. Okay. So what you what you major in? It's a long word, but it's industrial and organizational psychology. And you're doing nothing like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's like psychology and business. So I feel like you could use it for anything. I could use it for social media. Like, I guess get inside the minds of people. Yeah. Right. Get inside Show them what the they mind. Want. Yeah. Show get inside the mind of Shane Dawson. Yeah. Oh, the sociopath. God. I'm just oh my God. <laughs> I honestly just started keep, I not keeping up, but like I literally just found out about him obviously because of the whole Jake and Logan thing yeah. but that's kind of crazy I, 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 nice. I actually even watched one of his videos and I finally watched one of his videos when he was talking about Jake and, and I was like oh he's really good he's, he's pretty good he's a beast editor I was honestly I was surprised though because at first I was like is he faking this like the, the whole sadness crying thing and then everyone's like no 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 that's like that's him he brings it out in you and I'm like oh yeah I know. it's very intense the dramatic yeah. music and stuff I know right whoa you just blew up my ears All right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let's get into this before. So after college, what, what, what was your plan? You moved to LA, you moved to San Diego, you're on your own, you live at home. Um, I moved, well, I lived in San Diego after for like a year and then, um, I decided to leave and come back to LA and I was like, you know what? I don't know what I want to do yet, but I started just, I, I know I wanted to do like HR. Um, and I started taking some internships and found out that I actually hated it. Really? Like I could not sit in an office all day. I was like way too like, oh, I got to do something, you right. know? And so I just kind of like, I've always been involved in like the restaurant industry. So I just got a job at Nobu Malibu. Okay. And I worked there for about a year. 
in like a year. Oh, and I thought half. you just got a job like right now. No, I was so no, confused. No. What the? <laughs> no, no, no. And I started. So you worked at Nobu Malibu. Yeah. But, and, and is this the time? So I met you because George took you to a very nice dinner. He did. We won't call it a date. But you just did. But it, it it was it was a date for George. It was a date for George. <laughs> because you guys met at Jake's house. How did you meet Jake? Why were you over at Jake's house? It's so random. I'll like try to sum it up real quick. But like I so working in Nobu Malibu, I had this friend and I he was like, hey, like meet me for lunch. I'm like with this one of my other friends, blah, blah, blah. So I meet him at lunch. And his friend is this YouTuber, like this guy, um, Matt, Matt Crawford. OK. And um he was like, I love your personality. Like you have like such like a, like a great, like you can connect easily with people. And I was like, thanks. And he's like, you should be on my That's YouTube. That's actually the first time anyone's ever said that to me. I'm like, oh my God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> but keep going. <laughs> um, and he's like, he's like, you should be on my YouTube. I'm like, yeah, I don't really know what YouTube is, but like, I mean, I knew what it was, but right, I didn't know right. you could like have a career in it. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm down. So he, we did like maybe like two episodes on his thing. And then one night he texts me, he's like, yo, you got to come with me to this party. It's like really good for you to like meet these people. I'm like, I don't know. Like maybe I'll see when I'm done with work. I mm -hmm. get off work. I'm like, I'll just stop by. Like, honestly, if I didn't stop by, like my life would not be where it is right now. Nuts. But, Cause yeah. you said yes. Yeah. Seriously. And that's something I always like preach on my podcast is like a lot of opportunities come from saying yes. And like, yeah, a lot of people just want to stay at home and be like, oh no, like this is what works for me. Yeah. But like going out and meeting new people and doing new things like the saying yes basically is what can get you to where you are it's like stepping out of your comfort zone and that's all i do now is like i i used to not even like traveling i used to be such a homebody right now i take any opportunity that comes my way because i i swear like living in like fear or or scared of like not feeling comfortable or in your element is it just holds you back so right i like i honestly i like being uncomfortable but yeah. i do Traveling gives me severe anxiety just in the sense of because I hate living out of a suitcase. Like um, that's the one thing I hate. I like to know where my shit is. And every time I go traveling, yeah. for some reason, I'll come back and I'll like have Lose forgotten something. some shit. Yeah. yeah. And it frustrates me. I mean, it's all for everyone. If it was for everyone, like we'd everyone all be traveling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you went to Jake's. You met Jake. Well, you met George. Then I remember George bringing you over to our, our old apartment, 850, back in the day. And uh, oh. I kind of blew his date for him. I remember he brought he brought you back and he was like, he was like, oh, this is Ayla, guys. And we're like, oh, yo, what's up? And I was like, wait, is she the Christian one? Oh, you did you do that on purpose? No, I, I didn't do this on purpose. That was so funny. Because George, you know, if you guys know George, you guys have seen him on my po podcast. He has a habit of talking to a lot of women. A lot of women. So yeah. like I lose track at times. So I know. he brought her back and I kind of just made her seem like another girl. And I, I'm sorry for that. Three, Dude, three years I thought later. It was, remember? No, but remember we literally, I got there and you guys, I think it, you and you were in your room and Logan was in his room and I, and you guys, we started just all joking and you guys were like, oh damn, like, okay. Like it wasn't even bad. I started laughing at that because I thought right, it was right. so funny. But George afterwards was like, damn Dude, it, Mark, you I fucking know, blew it. I know, I know, he's so funny. <laughs> uh, but it was all fun and games. Uh, so, so after that, you moved to 1600 Vine, right? Yeah, it was honestly like, I've never had, like George was so funny about that night because I mean, that was like the first night that I'd, I'd gone out to a dinner with him. And he's like, do you want to meet my friends? And I thought he meant like... Which, by the way, he never does that. He would never do that. Yeah, it was so interesting to me. He was like, do you want to meet my friends? And I was like, sure. But I thought he meant like, well, we're going to go to like a house party and just make meet your friends. Right, right. We show up to this building, 1600. Yeah. Which, by the way, you guys, if you're not familiar, 1600 Vine was like where all the Viners lived. All yeah. the social media influencers lived in this one building on Vine Street in Hollywood. And that's how they all exploded. Yeah. So yeah, that's where I lived. <laughs> used to be cool. I mean, come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> uh, um, and we literally get there and he just starts like going to people's doors and like walking in. I'm like, is this, is this what you do it's, here? And it was literally like, like a dorm room. Yeah. Yeah. And I literally met, I met you. I met Logan. I met Amanda, Christian, Johannes. Rudy. Rudy. Like I met literally, uh, I met, what did, did I meet? Like. God. Probably Marcus Johns, like everyone, everyone lived there. Yeah. Everyone, and we, all, we he walked into everyone's room, and I was just like, I was like, oh, and then we went to we went to Alyssa and Jordan's old place. Oh my god! Yeah, and they were having game night with like Curtis and Rachel and like Jeez. Helen and Zach and just so many people, and I literally met everyone that night. So you got to thank George Jenko because a lot of your no, close I, friends now 100%. are Alyssa and Rachel. Yeah, Alyssa, Rachel, um, Helen. I'm going on a this weekend with her somewhere, like. 
I mean, seriously, just meeting That's nuts. Every, Yeah. So George brought you into the social media circle in a way. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after Jake's, but then George, then you said yes to going on a date with George. If I didn't say yes. Why? If you didn't say yes. Where so, would hey, you girls out that? there, you should just say yes. yes. Say, yes, yes, say to yes to George. Say yes to George. <laughs> say yes to George. You're welcome, George. I'm helping you out. <laughs> but after that, so you didn't really get into social media. And then I remember, uh, so I met this kid. He, he commented on my YouTube videos. He's like, hey, dude, um, I live in L.A. I'm seven feet tall. Like, I uh, want to make a YouTube video together. And I had no idea for today, for that day. And I was like, yeah, dude, come over. And yeah. he came over and I was like, yo, this would be really funny if I did like a, a set up a blind date with Ayla. And I call, this was all super last minute. And it's my most viral video I've ever made on YouTube. Yeah. It's called seven Woo! foot tall guy meets four foot tall girl, which she's actually four foot 11. On, what, 410? 411. 411. Very Some, short. Sometimes I have five feet on my license, so so sometimes. So, so the video was basically I set up this like fake blind date between him and you, and just the thumbnail was great because he's double your size, yeah, and it went extremely viral. Then after that, you gained a lot of followers, and so did I. That was kind of like that took my career to the next level. That was and dope. it kind of started off you because you were you were being in skits and stuff. I was doing yeah, so I started doing some skits with George, and then like a couple of the guys were. Or, People were just like, hey, like, can you do this quick little thing in my skit? So, and then that's why I was like, I was just going to 1600 too much. Right. So I was just like, I'll just move there. Right, right. So then I moved there and then you were like, yeah, let's do this video. And at first I was kind of hesitant because like, I had a boyfriend. Like, yeah, I was yeah, living yeah. with him at 1600 and you're like, can you pretend to be this other guy's girlfriend? And I'm like, dude, is this like the life? Is this yeah. what I have to do? And I was like, <laughs> sure, I guess I'll do it. But it was completely sarcastic and satirical. And I don't know why people, everyone was like commenting and thinking you guys were actually dating. That was, you know what's crazy is I went to work that night or no, not that night, like what, three three nights later. And that was the first time ever someone came up to me and they're like, oh my God, you're from that video. And I'm like, what? And they're like, you're from that video. Like you have the boyfriend who's really tall. And I'm like, shh. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, this is real. Like I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh God, it's happening. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, where is he? I was like, oh, it, we're not really dating. It was more of just like a video. And they're like, oh man, like that was the cutest thing ever. And then a lot of people started asking me about that. Like they'd recognize me from that right. video. And I was like, okay, it's starting. Which is so funny because I, I thought it was so evident in the video that we were just having fun. Like yeah. and making a joke of it. Yeah. But it, like, it was like so funny though. I mean, like I think our second video that we did together, we made it way more evident that it was kind of just like yeah, a joke. Like, oh, well, I had you guys play parents, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had you like raise twin babies, yeah. which also that video killed it too. We should do another one. We did another reunion. We should. We, we should, should think of something else. Um, that would be. Funny. But yeah, so you you started that, and you got up to like fifty thousand followers or whatever, and mm -hmm. kickstarted, started doing the the whole social media thing, and then along came Logan. Yeah. As, I, so how did that opportunity happen? Because you were doing what bottle service at Beauty and Essex. Yeah. So I opened up Beauty and Essex and like kind of like ran their like bottle service or like you know I, I mean so waitressing and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Um, and I knew I wanted to do like YouTube because like obviously being in the building, you know, you get used to this stuff. You're like, okay, it's like I want to do too, it too. Yeah. yeah. Everybody around so, you. The cool thing about the building guys is because everyone around you has the same goal. Everyone around you was creating content. So it's just like, yeah. oh, like why not be friends and have fun and do this? So it's like. It's inspiring. It's like obviously why a lot of people listen to the podcast because they want to hear this kind of stuff. It's like surround yourself with people that are like minded. Yeah, hundred percent. And I just I was like, you know what? So I started doing some YouTube, some of my own skits, and it was actually doing really good. I think I like. I'm not even kidding. I think I almost got it to like 100k. And Logan and I started just hang, hanging out too. It was like every time he was doing a video, he's like, yeah, just come be in my vlog. Come be in my vlog. Right. And then one time he messaged me and he was like, hey, um, I want you to like represent my women's merch. And I'm like, all right, dope, like I'll do it. And so I came over and he was like, all right, I'm gonna release it tomorrow. Like I wanna make a, a super quick video of you like on my balcony, just kind of walking through all of it. I'm like, okay, cool. And I did that. And after that one, a lot of people were like, oh, who's Ayla? Like, who's this girl? Cause he posted it like on his um, YouTube and on his Instagram and like his Facebook. And right. everyone was just like, oh shit, like who's this girl? And we started kind of like hanging out more and more. and. He was, oh, I remember one time. Okay, so I, he had, remember when he had the ball pit in his bus? Yes, I never saw this, but I, I mean, I saw the video. I never went to it though. Okay, so he was like, yo, come be on, come do this bus thing with me. I'm like, okay. And he kept having like a new girl over every day. And I'm like, what's <laughs> up with these girls? Like, why do you have girls over all the time? He's like, oh, dude, I'm trying to find an assistant. Like, it's killing me right now. And I'm like, why? And he's like, because either A, they're good on camera, but they suck at assisting, or they're awesome at assisting, but they're awkward as fuck on camera. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh damn, I'm like, that sucks. And then I remember going home and being like, 
yo, our next, we should make a vlog about me like trying out to be your assistant. He's like, dude, would you like actually consider doing that? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I feel like that kind of ruined our friendship. He's like, yeah, I mean like you'd have to stop doing like your own YouTube and like your own photo shoots and all that. I'm like, that actually could be kind of dope though. Like it could be like Rob Dyrdek and like what? What's drama. It? Not drama, but what's the other oh, girl? Oh, big? No. The, oh, um, um, you know. Is it, the, uh, I know who you're talking about. It's not like Sean Taylor's. Is it Sean Chanel Taylor? West Coast. Chanel, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, it could be like a Rob Dyrdek and Chanel. Yeah, like, yeah. And he's like, yo, I'm actually down. Like this could be sick as fuck. Like we should do it. And I was like, you know what? That actually could be cool. Like, this is what I want to do, social media. And mm -hmm. it would get me out of being in the nightlife industry. Right, right. So we did it. And I'm, it was insane. People, like, grabbed onto us yeah, so it's hard. Yeah, it's Next level. Vlog audience is, like, no joke. <laughs> like, P, I mean, mm -hmm. people were just, you know, the shipping came along. Yeah, and, yeah. like, everyone was... I, and he didn't even... I mean, like, obviously I was in his vlogs, but he wasn't, like, tagging me, like, saying, right, like, right. Ayla Woodruff, nothing. Mm -hmm. you, you just had to, like, find me. But people found me and were just, like, on it. I remember I grew to, like, almost a million in two, three months. It was insane. Insane growth. Yeah. What was it like being his actual assistant real life work, though? Because I, I was like, his roommate. I feel like it was, like, yeah, I know. I remember we talked about that. Because you, like, lived in his closet at one point. I did. I, yeah. I slept in his closet on an air mattress <laughs> underneath yeah. his clothes. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, being his, I mean, it was, I think the hardest, I think it was more, like, kind of really hard for me because, one, you know, he wanted me to be in the vlog all day. So I was with him every single day. Right. And I was on camera. But then at the same time, he's like, I also need you to get stuff done. Right, right. So it's kind of hard to, like, balance all of that. And then, you know, like I was just going through some other personal issues mm -hmm. like at home and things like that. So it was getting us a lot like stuck in my head. And it's weird when you're friends with someone and then you start working for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like, oh man, like the, sometimes like when the way we talk to each other, it's kind of like, oh shit, like this is work. This isn't like being friends, which, you know, I mean, I expected that to happen, but it also felt kind of weird at times because I was like, oh man, like. I don't feel like we're really being friends right now. <laughs> right, right. You know? Oh, 100%. That's, I mean, that was kind of the relationship we had too. Like we were friends first, then yeah. I started to work for him. And then it's just like, you have to be able to separate your friend life and your yeah. work life and like be able to treat the two differently. And it's, it's tough. Yeah. You know, it's like, cause he, cause he could be like, yo, clean this up or an answer these emails. And you're like, but like, and then afterwards he's like, oh, I want to watch a movie, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. So it's like, he's, yeah. And he's like, so just like that. So good at it. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, some, he, I feel like sometimes like he would even yell at me and then he'd be like, yo, are you hungry? And I'm like, what? Like, yeah. are you, I'm like, are you okay? Yeah. You know, but, or, or whatever it is. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know what? It was so good at the time. And I mean, I realized while I was doing it with him that one, I, I thought that if I continued to do it, like it would have ruined my friendship. Um, it also was kind of ruining my relationship. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was like, I don't want to give up like doing my own thing too. And I was with him every single day. So I like kind of told him, I was like, Hey, like, I think I'm just going to like do my own thing. Um, you know, kind of like start my own YouTube back up again, whatever. And he was like, all right, let's chill. Yeah. Cause so. it can, it's, it's really hard to maintain your own and, and focus on yourself when you have to work for someone else. Yeah. Um, but you, you have to work for someone else when you're first getting into social media, regardless. Yeah. Like when I first got into social media, I worked for Logan. I worked for Ariana Grande. I did all of these yeah, side gig jobs. Did you and, work for Usher too? Uh, no, that was Jordan. Oh, that was Jordan. Okay. Yeah. I did a bunch of things, a bunch of like freelance stuff just to yeah. make money so I could progress my career. But it's hard, especially when you're being his assistant, which is your job. Yeah. Two, you're on the vlogs, which is like a second job. And then to be able to go home and maybe do your own videos, or your own photos. It's just like at the end of that day, you're exhausted because you're doing his job with him. And then you're trying to do your job on the side. Yeah. So it's really hard. So at some point, which you did, you you made the step to say, hey, look, you know, I want to do my own thing. And it's so, so what, funny. Cause was that a hard decision? Yeah, I mean, it was because like at first, well, yes and no. Like one, I, I kind of knew it. I was like, if I keep staying here, it's it's. I don't know if it's going to work out in the best for both of us or for my life, whatever it is. Right. But um, I don't know. Like I, I, I knew deep down it, it was like getting to, it was getting a little bit more stressful than it needed to be. And I was like, I, I know that like I have to like step back right now um, and kind of like figure out my life. Otherwise, if I keep doing this, I'm going to get really sucked into it and then mm -hmm. it's going to be hard for me to get out. 
Yo, guys, I interrupt this podcast to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Care Of. Care Of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that brings completely personalized vitamins and supplement packs right to your front door. You just got to take an online quiz online. Uh, It'll ask you questions about your diet, health goals, lifestyle choices, and it only takes five minutes to find out what vitamins and supplements you specifically need. Uh, You know, 90% of people fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient in their daily diet. Uh, The cool thing about Care Of is they get delivered right to your front door. I actually got my package in the mail the other day. It's convenient because I can just go online, order the vitamins. I don't have to go to the store and read all the stuff. It's all right there for you guys to know. And it comes right to your front door. Who doesn't like stuff coming right to your front door? They have vegan and vegetarian supplement options available to match your dietary needs. If you guys are vegans, vegetarians, whatever it may be, guys, uh, I'm giving you guys 25% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins. Just visit takecareof.com and enter the promo code LARGE. That's takecareof.com, promo code LARGE for 25% off your first month of personalized care of vitamins. Let's get it. Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think one know. of the hardest moments in my life was quitting working for Logan. I really? Felt, I was, I, I'm just like, I don't like confrontation. Me like, neither. I hate it. And, and I was just so nervous because I knew, like, it was bottled up in me. Like, I knew I wanted to quit and pursue my own thing. And I just was so nervous to do it. I kept pushing it off, pushing it. And finally, one day, I was like, fuck, man, I got to do it. I took like two shots of tequila to calm myself down and Damn. I sat and it wasn't even a big deal. And Logan like knew it was coming. I'm like, yo, Logan, look, um, he knew I, it was coming for me too. Yeah. He knows it's coming. He literally knew it. He's, he's like, like, I could tell. And I was like, I was so nervous. He's like, yeah, man, that's cool. I'm yeah. like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, I mean, I, I figure like you, you, eventually you're going to quit. Like it yeah. happens, you know, you got to move on with your life. And I was like, oh. He made it so easy for me. Yeah. And I was like the whole time freaking out. Like, is he going to get pissed at me? Is he never going to talk to me again? Is this going to ruin my life? Like, yeah. it wasn't like that at all. And you still, you guys are still friends. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're friends. Like, I mean, we like had a moment where we weren't friends. Right, right. Um, Which yeah, it's understandable because you quit working for him. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I quit working for him. But uh, I think, and then there were just like other things that kind of got in the middle. You know what I'm saying? But like, mm-hmm. it was, it. I always, I, like, I love him. Like, he's such a good person. Like, and he's been, like, such, like, an iconic growth in my life. And I, like, appreciate his friendship. And so, like, I'm really happy that we're friends again. It's, like, really nice to, like, kind of be back to, like, because we're all friends, you know? And we all kind of, like, drifted away. And I feel like that was, like, the saddest part is we all kind of, like, got maybe so involved in what we were doing. And everyone was kind of, like, getting, you know, either, I don't want to say, like, we weren't like getting in fights or anything, but like right. everyone was kind of just like, ah, oh, well, you know, screw this, I'm doing this. or right. And then it wasn't like a collaboration anymore. Right. But now I feel like we're all kind of like, yeah, it's interesting F- because at, at one point everyone was collaborating, everyone's working together yeah. and then everybody started to split off and kind of do their own things. Yeah. Everyone moved out of 1600 Vine. They either got an apartment, they got a house. Yeah. Me included, you included, George included. We stuck together though. Fucking love you, George. <laughs> but yeah, it kind of, that whole team friendship kind of fell apart. And I think, I don't know, those were like two years of important growth, I guess, for each person individually. And I think now it's cool because we don't necessarily all create videos together anymore. We more so hang out as like friends. And then like, it's like, it's like normal. It's like, oh, you go to work today and do your thing. I go to work and then like, oh, let's hang out. Yeah. It's like, I do miss though, creating videos with everyone. I think that was like, that was the fun part. But I think it's cool, too, that it's like separate lives. Yeah, I I think like I think we all kind of had to figure out our own thing. Right. too. I mean, I didn't even know when I finished with Logan. I mean, he wanted me to sign with him uh-huh. and I I didn't want to. I was like, I mean, I wanted to, but I didn't want to because I didn't want to be like stuck in like a Team 10 type thing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't know. Like, which I kinda- was which I mean, Team 10 is obviously it's a great in theory, but obviously certain things happen. People drift right, apart. Right, right. And I, I mean, like I was kind of, I'm a, I'm a little bit older than everyone too. So right, I was kind of right. just like, I don't know. Like that's like a lot of my life away. And I didn't, I feel like since I grew so fast, I didn't even have a chance to figure out like, what do I want? Like, what right, do I right, want to pursue? Right. Like It happens I, really quick. Yeah. Like here's how I describe social media. It's like, it's a long process of doing a lot of shit for nothing essentially for nothing right and then one day something big will happen and transform it and then it's just sprung on you so fast and you just don't really know how to handle it yeah like for example that video we made together that went viral i had like a hundred thousand subscribers or like 150,000 total subscribers i posted that video and i literally was at a half a million in 
three days dude it's insane. and i was like i don't know what to do right now i have to keep up with this now it's like that's, a mission that's exactly when i when i quit with logan i because i had already had a youtube before i was with logan and i i think i posted like three four videos and then when i quit with logan i had literally like four hundred eighty thousand subscribers mm-hmm. and i was like what am i gonna do with you guys yeah, like yeah. i don't even know what to post right now so right. i just started posting stuff and it was doing good and i think i'm I'm still at like, I think I'm like 800 something thousand, but I don't, I don't really do anything with it because I was kind of like, well, we all kind of moved out. I don't know what I want to do. And I kind of was like, I want to travel. Maybe I want to get into makeup. Maybe I want to get into clothing. I don't know. So I was like trying to figure it out. And the thing that sucks about that too is when you're trying to figure out what you want, sometimes you like lose people. So I was like at my peak. And then all of a sudden I was like, well, now I have to figure out my life. So then I was like the, the following from Logan and everyone else was kind of weeding out. Right, right. So I had to lose followers and then uh-huh. gain them back up. Right. And that was like hard too. So yeah, so let's talk about this. Where where are you at right now? What do, What is it that you want to focus on? Because I know you've been traveling a lot. Um, yeah. What do, what do you want to do? Do you know? Traveling is kind of like, I mean, it's it's work. Like I obviously, that's obviously a job for me to go out and do these things. Um, And traveling for me kind of was like, a little bit more of a way to open up like my perception of like life and like this world and make new connections with people and like understand different cultures. And I felt like I got so caught up in like LA and social media that traveling for me was a way to kind of like open up my heart a little more, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. And I, I know that it's not something that I'm going to be able to do forever. Um, but I think like my end, I always say this, like I truly believe that my end goal is gonna be acting. Like I, I kind of feel like that's my mm-hmm. my role and not acting in the sense where, you know, some like Disney thing or mm-hmm. some, some like little cheesy whatever, which I don't mind obviously starting off doing, but I want really bad to do, play a role that like really has to like project a character out in me that's super uncomfortable and different that I have to like work hard for, if you know what I mean? Like yeah. I really wanna do something that's kind of shows a little bit different side of me that people may never have seen. So I think that that's something that I really want to do. And I just have been waiting a little bit because I know that I want to be dedicated to acting. And right now traveling for me is super important, Mm -hmm. I think for my like mental health. And so I think doing that is kind of just like where I'm at. But yeah, I think it's really interesting because a lot of social media is, what would you say the biggest struggle with being in social media is? Mentally or career wise, whatever. I think mentally because like, you can have your highest highs and your lowest lows. Right. And it's so hard because, I mean, people literally say, oh, don't let what people say affect you or it's your own life or like, who cares about social media? But at the end of the day, look, that's like our job. Right. Like we make our living off of that. So how am I supposed to not stress out if like views are going down or likes are going down or I'm getting comments or people are like, you know, whatever it is they want to say, that's so stressful because it's just like a regular job for anyone else. Like. Right. And I mean, like we, uh, we're, we're consistently changing. So our following has to be with us while we're changing. Right. And if they're not, then we stress. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Yeah. I think too, the, the biggest struggle with social media as well is you don't know how much, how much money you're going to make on no. a given day, a given month, a given yeah. year. It varies so much. You can have such a good month and then you can go two, three months without making a dollar. Yeah, you only like once in a very while get like these year contracts where it's right, like, right. okay, cool, like I'm, I'm set, yeah. But that's like once in a good while, you know? Right. I've only received one of those where like, I'm like, okay, cool, I know this, this, but that's it, like you, you don't know. And so. I think the thing with YouTube too is you could put so much time and energy into a video, it could get demonetized. Yeah, you could put, And you can make, I've, I've literally had a video get demonetized and make like $40. And I'm like, wow, I spent more money on this video yeah. than I made. And that happens a lot. Yeah. So it's like it's like showing up for work one day and the, your boss being like, you know what? I'm going to pay you a third of what you made yesterday. And you're like, yeah. wait, why? I did the same fucking work. I like, stayed overtime. Yeah, I, I, I like, did more work yeah. and I'm making less. So it's like that's the mental toughness too. Yeah. But then obviously, uh, I mean, a lot of people make really good livings on social media, but it it, it it's gotten to the point where it's like, you can't just be an Instagram or you can't just be a YouTuber. You have to, you know, make the merch. You have to do music. You have to do Instagram and musically and all of it. Every, you literally yeah. have to do everything. And it's just, I it's, know. it's frustrating in a sense, because like I said, you don't know how it's going to be in your career. Essentially it is in your hands, but it's in the hands of 
other people to yeah. like, do they like you or not? And yeah, and it weighs on you. I know it's so hard, but like at the end of the day, I feel like if you just, that's kind of like why I always say like, I think my angle is acting. It's not even like a goal. I, I, I like honestly just, I'm manifesting it out there. I know it's going to happen. Like that's what's going to be my end thing. And you know, maybe I'll have like a company on the side or something. Right. Like I've always loved doing anything in fashion. So maybe I'll do something with that. Not merch, but like fashion. a legit yeah, brand yeah. line. Um, but what, yeah. what would you say, I'm trying to word this, like I, on your social media, I've never seen you be like sad or negative. And like, I, I know a lot of people say like Instagram isn't reality. Oh, you, you haven't know seen me being sad or negative? No, never. I've never been negative. I mean, not really sad, but sometimes I'll post like quotes or I'll post like sayings that a little bit deeper than normal. Um, I think this year, especially like. Because here, here's what I'm trying to get to. It's like on Instagram, on social media, we portray this perfect life. We have fun. Like you only see it, it's a highlight reel. Basically, you know, you right. show your best photos, you show your best angles, all the good happening in your life. But at the same time, I, I kind of what I'm trying to get at is like, how how is it because you also have personal life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you went through a breakup, you went through quitting with Logan, you've gone through, you know, other life challenges. Yeah. How do you stay positive and not project that onto your social media? Um, sometimes I even think about putting it on my social media just because like I know that it's easier for people to like relate to my life because they're like, oh, she's not just always positive. She's talking about real stuff. But then again, I also think of like, it's not only my business, but someone else's business. So I don't want to put someone else's business on my platform, you know, just because right, right. like it's out of respect. The way I stay positive is, this is strictly how my mind works, is you are your own solution to everything. Right, right. If you get upset about something, that's that's on you. If you are like mad or hurt or stressed, all of that is on you. You can't sit there and wait for someone to be there to help you or pick you up off your feet. Like everything you do, that's a you problem or like a you solution. So I always tell myself if I'm upset or mad, I'm like, yo, switch it up. Like you're not, you're not a tree. You're not stuck. Get up, right, right, right. do something. And that's when I realized I was like, I'm going to travel. Cause I realized I'm like, you know what? Sometimes with the whole transition, because you know, with quitting with Logan and then literally a few months later, my boyfriend and I broke up. We were living together. We had to like separate with our dogs, like it, with our dog. And it was just, it was a lot mentally. And I was like, what am I doing with my life right now? And I, I was like, I could sit here and sulk or I could get up and do something. Right. So I got up and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start traveling. And I wasn't making money off traveling or anything, but I was like, you know what? I, I'll just like pick up this here and there. And then now it's become a career, but I kind of just like manifested that out. It's, it's, it's hard. I know for people to believe, but Nobody is going to help you and how you feel except for yourself. That's so. a good, yeah, that's like, and that's something I was, I was even watching like a Casey Neistat video on the way over here. And it's like, everything starts with yourself and it's so important. And I think that that's a good message to send you guys. Like if you're dealing with something, it's like, you can't really sit and blame other people. I mean, certain scenarios, I'm sure you could, but at the end of the day, it's like your happiness is your choice in a sense. Right. And even if you... Like not necessarily blame someone, but even if it was someone else's fault, you take it for what it is. Like I take every person for who they are. Like I don't, I don't expect anything from someone that I necessarily, like for instance, my sister, just real quick. My sister, she is, her and I get along so well laughing wise and hanging out, but she is super cheap. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I will never expect to go to like Starbucks or something and have her be like, yo, I got you. Right, right. But my mom, she got upset the other day because she was like, your sister doesn't help out. She doesn't do anything. And I'm like, mom, that that's just Raina for Raina. Like, I don't, you don't expect anything more From, Yeah, yeah. because take her for who she is. And if something bothers you, then just step back a little bit. Like, I don't, I don't hate anyone or dislike anything in my life. Even people who've hurt me, like you maybe were going through something you know or what's, whatever what's, it is. What's your, what's your birthday? August 25th. So what does that make you? Like a, I'm a your Virgo, but apparently like my, I'm like very Leo. Is, I, I went through this whole okay, thing. Okay, so I don't know anything about those two. Kylie does. She's really into the horoscopes. So yeah, we were talking about a dinner uh, one night. Yeah. yeah, for sure. She's obsessed with horoscopes. So she'd be able to tell you a little bit better. But that's one of my qualities I feel like is I don't hate anyone or no. get mad at anyone. It's so 
strange to me that when I see people get so angry to the point where they want to fight and like beat someone up and like call them names, it just doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't even really, I don't even talk crap about anyone anyway. Like, you know, people will kind of vent to you about certain people or whatever. And I'm just like, yo, that's just who they are. Like, if you don't like it, then maybe step back. And if you like right. them, so hang out more. Like, that's all it is. You don't have to stress out over it. I know, right? You know? Life's too short to stress. It is. Have yourself a freaking pizza. I would know. I'm living a short life. I got to Oh, like, speaking <laughs> of which, I like to talk about people's ups and downs. And you have a lot of, no, I'm just kidding. I have a lot of uh, downs, <laughs> so I'm really sure. <laughs> no, what was it like? Because uh, on one of the episodes, I talked about like bullying with George. Did you ever like get made fun of or anything for being short? All the time. How did you respond to that? I just, I'll like heart the comment or whatever. I'm not oh, saying on oh, social wait. media. I'm saying like growing up for like high schoolers listening for oh, middle schoolers. You know what's so funny is I grew up in it with a family that was like very like we all joked around with each other. My dad jokes with my mom all the time. Like he'll literally call me. He'll be like, yo, Ayla. I'm like, what dad? He's like, your mom's been on Craigslist now for like three days. I'm just trying <laughs> to get rid of her and I can't. He's like, I'm about to bring her down to a dollar. And my mom's in the back and she's like, Brent, shut up back there. Like, you know? So I grew up with a family that was always joking with each other. So if anyone made fun of me, I just like, I laughed. If you had a good short joke, like I yeah. actually helped you with the joke. Yeah. People always say that because I'll be traveling and I have a friend of mine and she roasts me on Instagram. And like, I actually tell her like jokes. I'm like, yo, you should take a picture of this because I look really short right now. Because at the end of the day, like it's funny. Right. Like right. I'm short. It's funny. Yeah. Like I mean, if you have a good joke, cool. If you have a like a short joke and I've heard it like a million times, I'm like, okay, hey, cool. Yeah. But people used to like put their shirts in their like their knees up in their shirts and walk around school, and be like, look, I'm Ayla. And I would, <laughs> I'd just be like, yeah, that's good. Or I would just like push them and they'd fall. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, no, that's good. Yeah, it's it's very hard because I'm I, obviously a lot of people you know, deal with getting made fun of, but I I'm similar to you in the sense I used to get my last name's Donor and it rhymes with boner, oh, yeah, so they'd yeah, call yeah. me Donor Boner. But I would sit there and my brothers would be like pissed when people would do it. They're like bullying, and I just like didn't care. I don't yeah. I don't understand like like. If you're being bullied, I think it and it comes it goes back to like you not say, worrying about what other people think of you and stuff like that. I think it's important to just like not really care about other people's opinions unless they're like close to you and you value them. Like why right. why are you going to sit here and let Timmy bully you when you're not even going to talk to Timmy in 6 years like, yeah. ever again in your life? You know what I'm saying? You're never going to yeah. see him again. It's like once you get out into the real world in Los Angeles, you meet like your actual true friends I mean I still have really close friends from high school but like I don't talk to anyone from my high school really I'll no. see them once a year it's just yeah. like so I don't really like I didn't really get bullied I didn't bully anyone I kind of just stayed in my own lane but yeah that's good to know yeah but I mean I'm also not speaking for I mean I, I obviously hope that people can kind of live the way that I lived and just laugh it off because it's, it's honestly it's not a big deal if you're happy then no one can ruin your happiness but my brother he's really small and like I think for a girl too like I have to say that being small it yeah sometimes it sucks but a lot of people are like oh you're cute mm -hmm. like it's a cute thing so it doesn't really bother me you know but my brother girls would be like oh he's hot but he's like way too short right so he would just constantly be like no, I, hate I feel being that short, hate yeah, being short, yeah you know yeah. and I totally I told him I'm like Blake I'm like, look at all these like actors and people who are like yeah. so short, but they're killing it and they're still dating people. But I think it's either you let it get to you and you let it bring you down in life. I mean, or you, you can't just, really control your height. That's genetics. You can't. You know? But you, there's all there's other things besides height. You could have like a deformity. You could have like mm -hmm. a, like a. There's things you can't control, yeah. and you kind of just have to embrace it. You know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You just. Why are you so short? How tall is your mom? My mom's four eleven. Your dad's how tall? I think my dad's like five nine okay so he's he's normal average yeah. yeah is your sister short she's short too I'm right the oldest and the smallest in the family how old are you every i just turned 26 damn i know i'm shit. 25 i just turned 25 when did you turn 25 oh i missed your birthday yeah you missed my oh, birthday i'm sorry a little salty about it you said you're gonna I be was there traveling i'm sorry she's like yeah i'll be there 100 percent. and, and you're then, like uh, oh yeah ayla never says like, no to a party she's <laughs> like yeah <laughs> meanwhile she's taking back shots of tequila in vegas without me so i mean look a girl's gotta do what i gotta do what it's do you just... like to do for fun besides travel and drink tequila hang out i only actually only drink vodka i don't drink tequila wow you're one I of those know, girls sorry but if there's a tequila <laughs> brand out there i'll still take it I'm just kidding. <laughs> um I like to just hang out with Moomer. Yeah, you like your dog a lot. I love Moomer. Your dog's so photogenic. He's so 
freaking handsome. Yeah. I get compliments all the time. He is what kind like, is he? He's like a mutt. He's like a German pincher feral hound mix. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I adopted him, so I don't really know. Oh, you you went to shelter? Yeah, I used to be a foster parent. Really? Yeah. Ky- Kylie's, Kylie is so adamant about going to shelter. She's rescued like seven dogs. Same. I, is that something you do? Yeah, so um, Kinsey and I used to be foster parents when we lived in San Diego, and we fostered up to like 10, 12 dogs. Not at the same time, but like throughout the process. And... Uh, it's really good. And then even when um, I left San Diego, I started working at the shelter in Simi Valley. And before I would go, this was when I was so busy. I would wake up at five in the morning, go to the shelter, open it up, clean up like poop and pee of all the dogs in there. Leave at 1130, go to college for, no, no, leave at 1130. Yeah, go to college for some classes that I need to do and then work at islands at night. And that would be on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. And then the other days I would go early and then go teach preschool. So yeah, it's really, that's that's a busy schedule, especially yeah. for a college kid. But you know, you can handle it at that age. Yeah. But I think it's, it's, it's something that I wasn't really ever aware of being in Ohio. We, we don't really see like a lot of stray dogs in Ohio in my neck of the woods. So I didn't really understand until moving to LA when Kylie kind of opened my eyes about there's a lot of dogs that go to the pound and there's a lot of pounds that they kill the dogs if they don't get adopted. So what Kylie would do, she, there was two pounds by her. One was a kill and one was a no kill. She would drive to the no kill one and say she found the dog in that city. Cause if she found it in the other city, she would have to take it to the kill pound, but she would always and that's so sad and that's not something I ever really understood and I and I hate to bring and it's well it's good to bring the attention to it it's like if you can adopt adopt I guess yeah it's it's I mean I because a lot of dogs go unwanted or they're left stray or they'll be you know they'll have babies and then they'll get rid of the mom because it's no good anymore in their in their eyes it's just like it's sad well that's kind of another thing I want to do is um especially with traveling being in all these (laughs) other foreign countries like dogs are I mean, there's mass amounts of them on the streets all the time. And they're, none of them are fixed. There's like pregnant dogs all the time. And then there's puppies. And it's just like growing insane. And it's it's really, really sad. You just see them sleeping on the streets all the time. So especially going to the Dominican Republic and to Bali and stuff like that, I, um, I'm i going to try to like do my own thing and do something out there so I can get them fixed and stuff before, you know. That's really cool. Yeah. So that's kind of another thing that's on my list of things to do. Because I, you know me, I'm obsessed with dogs. Like, yes. Like more than people. And coffee. And coffee. And lattes. Yes. Uh, what's some advice, uh, real quick when we end, what's some advice you would give the up and coming person that wants to be a social media model, social media influencer? Um, I mean, it's so hard these days just because of how everything is going. But if you're like genuinely just happy with what you're doing... I mean, I, I kind of like even like a stand, have a standstill where on my growth right now, like I've literally fluctuate, but mm-hmm. I'm so happy. Like I'm just traveling and doing everything. So good things will come. Just, just if you are also stay dedicated, like I feel like you're the perfect person to preach about this because you never stop working. Like I always say, I'm like, oh yeah, Mark, Mark is like the hardest worker ever because you just like keep it going. I've definitely taken breaks and I know that that's really Taking a couple breaks. Yeah, but yours were like super minimal and then you came back full force. Yeah, yeah. Like I've like taken a break and then not really gone back. (laughs) So just keep going, like keep it going. Like I feel like that's, it's the dedication is what it is. Yeah, I don't even really know at this point what motivates me. I just like to, I like the feeling of accomplishing something. Yeah. I like creating, I like like finishing a video and putting it out and seeing people's reactions. So that's like why I keep going. It's cause like, I don't know. I like to make people smile, make people laugh, make people happy. If I can be a smile in your day, damn it. I'm going to be. But that sunset though. But that sunset though. <laughs> that you guys hear from Ayla Woodruff, episode 11 of living large. Don't forget cast box, download the app in the app store every Wednesday morning at 6 AM and watch it in video form on my YouTube. So you can see Ayla's four foot 11 ass at the table. Woo. We out. Bye.